so here we go. Um, you can see that I've moved the paints into these smaller cups, and I will explain why, even the white. I've added a little bit of water to each of those paints. Now you remember that we mixed them, you know, with a really, really good body, really, you know, decent thickness, because we wanted a thicker consistency, because we did a ring pour before. Now I'm going to do a couple of techniques where I actually want the paint thinner. And you do not need to add much to make it thinner. You know, we put the, put the blue paint right in here, you know, nice and thick. And you literally just need to add a couple of drops of water to it, literally just a few drops for each ounce. If you add a lot, it's going to be watery and that's not going to serve you. So I will show you after we've added a little bit of water how it looks. You can see it's thinner. It still leaves a little mound. We don't want it too thin. And I've already added a little bit of water to the gold. And I'll show you the gold. See, it still leaves a little mound, but it disappears very quickly. And that's how we want it. And I did the same with the white. Okay, so we have that. And so what we will do now is I'm going to do two different paintings. One with an added ingredient and one without. So we are going to do flip cups, which are fun because we literally flip the cup down and that's how we get our painting. So let's put some paint in the cup and I will explain the two different methods as we do them. The first method is going to be no silicone. So we get that. Silicone is an additive that people will use, treadmill silicone, and they will add it in. It makes beautiful cells in the paint, which are always really, really nice when you do a flip cup. Um, I'm going to do one with and one without so that you get an idea of the difference in how it looks. So let's start with layering the cup. I'm not going to layer it very carefully this time. I don't mind if the paints mix together, so I'm just going to pour it right in the center of the cup. Some white, some blue. They're still layering though because I'm pouring them slowly. Some gold. more white and again this size of cup is going to fill the whole canvas so we don't have to worry about it. it doesn't have to be full all the way and I'll add some more white I might do a little bit of extra do you see this <laughs> this is from the last painting I scraped this up off my surface so it's all mixed together but I'm going to add some of that anyhow Look at how pretty that is. Okay, that's a little thicker, but it doesn't matter because it's not the major part of the paint. All right, so now we have that. And what are we going to do? We're going to flip it. So you can either literally just flip it or you can pick up your canvas and flip it this way. That's a great way for beginners to do it. Uh, you will practice really uh, when you get some practice, you know, you'll have your cup and you'll go boop, just like that and you'll be able to do it very quickly. Practice that a little bit. But with a cup full of paint the first time, you don't want to spill it everywhere because you didn't flip it quick enough. So again, that's one of the things that you will learn over time. So we've let it sit there. The paint is dripping down from the bottom of the cup onto the canvas right now. And so I'm just going to Pull it over like this and flip it sideways and let all the paint out. Here we go. One, two, three, just like that. And I'm just going to let it pour out. And I'm actually going to pour the little dregs along the corner, just like that. And you can see how different it looks from when we did our ring pour. Uh, all kinds of crazy things going on here. I had way too much paint in there, but that's okay. I don't mind. See these beautiful cells coming up? That's because the paint was mixed with Floetrol, and Floetrol always makes a little bit of cells. Glue and water makes a little bit less. It kind of depends on what you're after. We really didn't get any cells on the other painting because the paint was also thicker. So thinner paint also gets you more cells. So keep that in mind. So. Look at all the bubbles developing. It's absolutely gorgeous. Cells and even the air bubbles are going to leave behind some interesting features here. Let's 
So let's get rid of those air bubbles while those gold cells develop and white cells. Look at that in the middle. Very, very pretty. And so we have this little bit of paint left here. And let me grab a popsicle stick. I am just going to scrape that out and use it to cover our edges. Remember we used we used white paint on the last one to cover there. Did we use blue? I, we used blue last time. We're just going to use what's left in the cup this time. Very nice. And so I'm just going to smooth that around. Nice word for this is a flow extender. And I'm not sure who said that phrase first, but it's a good phrase because wetting the canvas helps to move the paint and if you didn't have quite enough paint in the middle it extends how far your design will go. So keep that in mind. If you ever don't pour enough paint by accident you can always add more around the edges as long as you have a decent amount in the middle to make some kind of design with. So there we go. And as before, I am going to take some of the, there's no drops, so I'm actually going to use the cup. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to put a little bit of paint along the sides. And that's also going to encourage when we're tilting for the beautiful design to flow nicely and freely along the edges of the painting. Rather than being stuck on dry canvas and, you know, the design gets kind of messed up. So I'm just going to put a little bit this time, not as much as before, because there is a lot of paint on here and a lot is going to spill over the sides. So we're not going to have any problem covering these sides. Oops, okay. That's in good shape. Let's, uh, let's tilt this and see what beautiful things we will see. I'm just going to go to each corner and back to the middle, just like that. And I'm not pouring off the edges yet. And I'm deciding which edge will go first, and I think it's going to be this one. So I'm going to turn it around, and I'm doing just like that to get it over without losing everything. There we go. You can see there's a little blob right there. It's a tiny little bit of dried paint right there. And that will happen. I'm going to pick that up right now so that it doesn't affect the painting as we tilt. Because you don't want that little blob moving around. If, should you find something like that in your painting, that was not a blob, that was an air bubble. But should you find something like that, the best time to remove it is immediately when you see it because it could move around in the paint and really mess things up. So remove it as soon as you see it, and you'll do better. If you don't see it until later, well, there's nothing you can do about it, but earlier is better. So we'll give that another tilt. You can see that the paint moves a lot faster because we thinned it out with a bit of water. But the paint is not too thin. If your paint is too thin, it's going to crack later. <laughs> So we don't want that either. And so we have our last corner and our last side here. Get that poured off. And there we go. And I'm going to center it again. This is very, very unusual. Look at all those cells with the white and the gold. Look what they've done in the middle. Isn't that interesting? What a cool effect. And so this is what we get when we have no silicone in <laughs> and we've done a flip cup and we've used 24 karat gold which always does very very interesting things. I'm just touching up the edges to make sure that they're covered and they all are at this point. Watch your corners. Corners can be tricky. Sometimes corners absorb all the paint and then they look dry so make sure that those are covered nicely. And I think that looks 
really, really cool. Really unexpected for it to come out looking like that. Wow. I'm going to torch it one more time. See, wiping off the vinyl gloves. That's why we talked about wearing vinyl, if you can, because you can wipe them and you're not having to get new gloves. You can reuse them over and over. I've used the same pair of gloves for like five or six paintings once. And so torch, torch, torch. Get rid of those bubbles. Fascinating. You can see that the air bubbles popping in the middle are leaving all those little dark dots, which actually look really cool in this one. Fun, huh? Okay, I'm going to set this one aside and we're going to do another one. Uh, but what happens before you pick it up? Take a little tool. You could use a popsicle stick if you don't have anything else. But scrape off the paint that is dr dripping underneath. That will slow down the dripping and keep the beautiful design that you have on the side of your painting. Because the more it drips, the more it will drag the paint down. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to pick that up and move it aside and we'll be right back. We're using all the same colors, so let's just get another cup and I will show you the difference between flip cup number one and flip cup number two. Flip cup number two is going to have an added ingredient. Remember, we thinned the paint out a little bit so it's not as thick as it was before. I am now going to add treadmill silicone. I'll write it down in the supers for you. This is silicone. I'm going to add just a couple of drops to this. That's probably a lot. I'm not going to add it to all the colors. And I'm going to stir it in. Give it a good stir. You will see how different the cells are going to look when we do this flip cup just by adding the silicone. You will also see that it thickened the paint. It also does that. So I'm going to put just a few drops of water in here to get the paint back to the right consistency. That's better. Silicone will thicken your paint. Okay, let's layer a cup and we'll do it exactly how we did it before. We're going to put the white in first. And then the blue, except that it has silicone this time. And our gold, and we're just going to use exactly the same colors that we used last time. I'm running out of this mixed white, but that's okay. We'll have enough to do this. I'm going to just scrape out the last of the blue. There we go. Bit more gold. Scrape out the last of the gold while we're at it. And I believe last time we used some of the drips and drabs from the other paintings, so I'm just going to pour that right in there. And a bit more white. And now we've used up all those paints that we had mixed a little bit thinner, so that's perfect. And we will flip and go. So instead of turning it the way I showed you last time, I'm just going to flip it myself this time so you can see. One, two, three, flip really fast. A little bit spills out. And that's okay. That's, you know, there's no way you're going to do it unless you did it the other way where you held the canvas together. A little bit is going to spill out. So don't think you've done anything wrong. That's just how it goes. And we'll give it a moment to think and for all the paint to drip down. And uh, we'll see what we see. Here we go. One, two, three. Pulling it out. Lots of groovy stuff here. Now, see all of that cell action? That's your silicone at work. I'm going to turn that around a little bit. That is the silicone doing its thing. 
you're going to see a lot more cells in this because we put the silicone in the blue, but it is going to affect the other colors also. It's not just going to be that. So I am going to take the leftover paint, put it around the edges, just like I did last time. And we're going to use it for our flow extender. And we have all of this paint that's spilled from the last painting, and I'm going to use that for the edges. Because, again, the paint is going to flow over, and you are not going to see what was left underneath. It's just going to make the canvas nice and wet and smooth, so that the beautiful design can stay flowing over the side, just like it does over the top. Look at what's developing there. Isn't that great? This is going to look really, really groovy. Looking for any other puddles, because we may as well use what we have. And I'm going to use the cup. And I'm just going to spread this around. Try to keep it out of our pattern, if at all possible. The edges are going to pour off anyway, so we're not going to worry about that too much. But you don't want to get your fingers into the middle or anything and mess up those beautiful cells that are developing. I'm going to turn that around. Aha! <laughs> Had a nice big blob there. Let's use that. Set that aside and clean off my glove so that my glove is not slippery. And then we'll give this a little torch. Get rid of those air bubbles. You can see the air bubbles popping. If you mix your paint ahead of time, you cover it up with some plastic wrap you will have less air bubbles. If you can mix your paint 24 hours before you use it, it's a big, big help to get rid of air bubbles. But this morning we're doing all the demos at one time, and so we're mixing the paint and using it right away. And so you can see we're having a lot of air bubbles in the paint. And you will have less if you can let your paint sit for even a few hours is helpful versus using it immediately, okay? So, let's see, I'm not sure where we want to go first. I think we'll do this corner first. So I'm just going to pour that off. I'm encouraging it by moving the paint just like that. And then we'll go back to our opposite corner and pour off there. There we go. Just going to touch up that edge back to the middle. I think we're going to go this way now. We're going to get rid of some of that gold there at the edge. Boop. Looking good. And then our last corner is over here. And we're going to go all the way the other way. And there's still a lot of paint on this canvas. We can pour off more. You don't want to leave too much behind. And now we get to decide if we want to pour off more. It's not too bad actually. We could leave it just like this and we might leave it just like this. Beautiful. We're going to have to torch it one more time. But you can see how many more cells there were on this one than on the first one. It's a whole other game when you're adding in the silicone. I'm going to show you what that silicone was. The silicone that was in this little bottle is this. This is coconut milk hair serum that I've bought, you know, at the drugstore. 
and the first ingredient in there is dimethicone. I put it in this little bottle because it's easier to come out. But dimethicone is basically silicone. So if you have hair products, like serums that have dimethicone as the number one ingredient, chances are you can use that beautifully in your art to make cells. Torch it one more time, get rid of any new air bubbles that have risen through the paint. There shouldn't be much left at this point. Look at all those really, really groovy cells that are in there. Like that's, you know, you end up with, you know, kind of a little marbling effect sometimes. Uh, I think that turned out really cute. And some of these cells that you see here, they're going to continue to grow as the silicone stretches uh, the paint around. So here's one more thing you need to know about using silicone, though. When your painting is dried and cured and you want to varnish it, silicone needs to be washed off the paint because varnish will not stick to it. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't use it very often for that reason is I don't like having to clean the painting. If you don't plan to varnish your painting, then I wouldn't worry about it. Some people don't. So, uh, you know, I, then go ahead, use the silicone, enjoy it. Because look, it does some really, really beautiful effects. So anyways, we did uh, two flip cups, one with silicone, one without. And now you can see the difference between how that works. And you can decide how you want your art to look and, you know, which ingredients you want to use. Because remember, you're the artist. You get to decide. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And I hope you go and uh, put it into practice and make something beautiful for yourself. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.